ASP.NET Core application requires a server in order to receive requests and send responses. If you have worked with ASP.NET Web Forms or ASP.NET MVC, there you might have used IIS server. IIS was the default server for hosting ASP.NET Web Forms and ASP.NET MVC applications. But with ASP.NET Core, there is a new web server that has been introduced by Microsoft and which is the default web server for ASP.NET Core application. This server is called as Kestrel. So before we proceed further, let's first briefly talk about the Kestrel server used by ASP.NET Core web applications and how they work. Kestrel is a web server which is shipped with ASP.NET Core framework. By definition, Kestrel is a cross-platform web server for ASP.NET Core web applications. Now you might ask, when we already had IIS server, then what is the point of introducing yet another server for ASP.NET? The main reason why Kestrel server was introduced with ASP.NET Core is because IIS is a Windows only server. It cannot be used with another operating system. And the main reason to develop ASP.NET Core framework was to create cross-platform web applications with it. If ASP.NET Core application were only meant to be hosted on Windows server, then IIS was okay. But ASP.NET Core applications are cross-platform. That means they can be hosted on macOS or Linux. But IIS cannot be used on servers with macOS or Linux as operating system. That's why a new web server was required for ASP.NET Core, which should be cross-platform and can be used on any operating system like Windows, macOS or Linux. And that's why Kestrel was developed. In short, to make ASP.NET Core application platform independent, Kestrel server was developed and it was written from scratch and was introduced with ASP.NET Core. Kestrel is a cross-platform, it is lightweight and it is super fast web server. Kestrel web server can be used in two ways. It can be used as an application server, also called as edge server, or it can be used with reverse proxy server. When we are developing an application using ASP.NET Core framework, the server does not have to do much except for receiving the request and sending the responses. And the Kestrel server is quite good in that. So during development, the Kestrel server does not have to do anything. And keep in mind that Kestrel is a lightweight web server and can handle limited responsibilities. Also, it's not full-fledged server like IIS and it lacks many functionalities that is essential for a web server these days. For example, load balancing, URL rewriting, port sharing, response caching, direct file transmission, etc. These things cannot be done by Kestrel web server. So Kestrel server is good for development as it does not have to handle huge requests and also it does not have to perform complex tasks like load balancing or URL rewriting. But when the application is in production, number of requests to the application will be huge and server will have to perform other tasks like load balancing, port sharing, etc. And Kestrel cannot do that alone. So in production, we use Kestrel server with a reverse proxy server which can provide the extra functionality which Kestrel cannot. But the request is still processed by Kestrel server and also the response is constructed and sent by Kestrel server. Let's understand how the Kestrel server works. The main responsibility of Kestrel server is to listen for the HTTP requests, then compose the HTTP context object from that request and send that HTTP context object for further processing to the ASP.NET Core application. Let's say you have an ASP.NET Core application running on a server. On this server, you have Kestrel, which is responsible for receiving the requests and sending the responses, and you have your ASP.NET Core application. Now from the browser, you are sending an HTTP request to this ASP.NET Core application. On the server, Kestrel will receive this request, it will create an HTTP context object using this request, and it will send this HTTP context object to your ASP.NET Core application for further processing. Same thing applies to the HTTP response object as well. From the HTTP context object, Kestrel will create a response and it will send it back to the client. Here, we are using Kestrel as an application or edge server. Edge server is that type of server that receives the request directly from the network and processes that request. Here, as you can see, Kestrel is receiving the request directly and then it is processing the request. And here, we are using this Kestrel web server in development. But when we use Kestrel in production, there also Kestrel works in the same way. But there, we also have a reverse proxy server. Most of the websites today uses a reverse proxy server. 
A reverse proxy server is that type of server that receives the request from the internet and passes that request to the Kestrel server for further processing. We need a reverse proxy server in production because of the limited functionalities Kestrel server provides. Basically, a reverse proxy server is used to provide those functionalities which Kestrel server cannot provide. For example, load balancing, URL rewriting, port sharing, etc. But the request is passed over and processed by Kestrel server. In this diagram also you can see, the request is received by the reverse proxy server. A reverse proxy server can be an IIS server, Nginx server, Apache server, etc. But this reverse proxy server passes that request to the Kestrel server. And it is this Kestrel server which processes that request. We are basically using this reverse proxy server in order to provide extra functionalities which Kestrel server cannot provide. Okay. Now, the popular reverse proxy server combinations are Kestrel with IIS for Windows platform or Kestrel with Nginx or Apache for Linux or Mac OS. Keep in mind that in these combinations, IIS, Nginx and Apache are going to be the reverse proxy server and they will pass the request to the Kestrel server. So this was a high level overview of Kestrel server. Now let's go back to our ASP.NET Core project. Now when we run this ASP.NET Core application by clicking on this run button, it is going to start Kestrel server and on that Kestrel server, this application will be hosted. So here you can see on the client, we are receiving the response from the server and the server which has created this response and sent it back to the client is basically the Kestrel server. If I open this console application, so in the last lecture we learned that ASP.NET Core applications are basically console projects. Okay, so when we run an ASP.NET Core application, it starts a console application and that console application starts the server and on that server the application gets hosted. And here you can see some information about that. So here we can see that the server has started and it is listening to the requests on localhost and port number 5136. So by default, ASP.NET Core application uses Kestrel server, but it can also be changed to some other server like IIS as default server. Let's see how we can do that in the next lecture. And in the next lecture, I will also show you that how I'm saying that this server, which is currently running, is actually the Kestrel server. Basically, in the next lecture, we are going to look into this launch settings.json file. It is this file inside which we are specifying the settings for the Kestrel server as well as the IIS server. So let's have a detailed look in this file in the next lecture.